that one this slows down the zombies for one minute which is perfect for one of these two steps in plain sight is make the zombies not see you for 10 seconds killjoy one of three is to kill and free fire is basically the second best to max ammo you can whack it on it lasts 30 seconds and you got unlimited ammo I'm lit wise you don't really need one on but if you've got an epic one put it on I've, I've got a reduced um, shield cost perk wise dying wish on solo is perfect it basically saves your life so you want that on PhD slider, you can fill this slot with anything you like. Stamina up is a must as well, just like Dying Wish. And Zomb Shell is perfect for me because it leaves a little exploding kind of monkey bomb trail behind. You can go stand in that and zombies won't hit you. So you're good to go. I've got my katana ready and the welling as the pistol because we're going to be doing a very awesome tactic as soon as you get into the game. So when you get in the game, let the zombies come in and you're going to shoot two shots of the welling into the, each leg of the zombie. You're going to leave one zombie so you don't finish round one. That is an absolute must for this tactic. I've rebuilt some windows. You want maximum points. I'm going to shoot this zombie in the leg twice and then knife it. Go upstairs. There's going to be three zombies up here. You're going to leave one, like I said. Maximum points from him. There's two up here. Kill one, leave one. So you're going to open this door here. And then you're going to go open this door to the power. And you're going to go turn on the power. And then we're going to run into the main map. Leave that last zombie. You want to make sure it's definitely round one. Open the catwalk and knife the zombies. It's going to be one knife kill because it is round one. And they are going to come rapidly down the stairs. But just like I'm doing here. I'm knifing them. Come back if you're getting you know, overwhelmed with zombies. And then when you get down here you want to throw a grenade at the warden. If you throw a grenade at the warden, he's going to spawn into the map and he can give you one of the shield parts and his keys. So just kill the rapid zombies and dogs with a one knife. My katana's ready now. It should be in your game as well, so you can put that on to kill the rapid dogs and zombies. Watch out for the very, very slow zombie because that is the end of the round one zombie and we don't want to kill him. So here we go. I've got my katana out. The warden will spawn in and you can kill him. There you go, the katana is doing well, and even if you don't even have your katana and no pistol ammo, you can knife him and just be careful. There we go, I've killed the warden there, and he's given me the part for the shield. So that is what we're going to do now, we're going to open the rest of the map, or as much as we can, do exactly what I do here. There's another shield part, one of the shield parts will be that blue kind of flame on one of the old mobile dead fire afterlife um, places around the map, and as you can see, I'm going down to find the last shield part. I'm going down to the docks. You can spawn around here. There'll be some guides on YouTube. I think I've got a guide up as well, actually. You want to open this door because you'll have enough points. And you can go open the rest of the power for the map. And when you turn on the power, uh, a second warden will spawn. So you can just aim for his head and take him out. It won't take too long. Just knife him. Make sure you don't go down because in um, solo you get three lives. And you want to save them for the later Easter egg steps. So you want to kill the warden and you've definitely got all the shield parts. So this is where you want to go fly back to the spawn area of the map. And you're going to build the shield on this bench here. This is just outside spawn in the new industries area. Pick it up. And now the second thing to do, if you've got enough points, obviously go in box. But you don't really need to. But now we're going to go fill up the um, dogs to get the Hell's Retriever. And also, throughout the whole Easter Egg... You want to make sure you're keeping on filling up your charged shield. And to do that, just get your shield out and press the shoot button to get the soul from the zombie into your um, shield. And I think maybe the normal shield can hold up to two um, spirit blasts. When you upgrade the shield, which I'm going to show you later in this uh, video, it can hold up to four and you definitely need that for the easter egg step. So yeah, you want to fill up the dogs on round two, three and four. Um, all, all three dogs to get the Hell's Retriever. So as you can see, I'm in the second location here. I've just done the first one in the spawn area. You should know where these are, hopefully. And the third one is just outside the Warden's office. As you can see here, I'm not killing any zombies until i filled up all the um, dogs. So I'm just doing a little hard and it's round four now. Make sure you've got 500 points to then go through the transportation to get the Hell's Retriever. So the dog is filled up, we can now go through this um, transportation tunnel and you want to press X or square to pick up the Hell's Retriever on this lovely, I'm going to call it, 
Mount Doom, Mordor. It's a little version of it. So we've got the Hell's Retriever now. So now we're going to be going around the map. You want to leave a zombie at the end of round four. And we're going to go Hell's Retriever, this location here. And look at that, it picks up a skull. We're going to go to this location here. Hell's Retriever, that's going to pick up a skull. We're basically going to get a free blunder gap. This is how you do it. Hell's Retriever, this location to get a blue skull. If you can't see the blue skull, get your um, shield out and go into um, spirit mode afterlife. Also, I've just shown me using the katana. You want to get that up to level 2, but I'll show you later in the video. I'm on the roof now. I've just activated pack a punch and there's a fourth skull to pick up. And then you want to go to the docks. And this is the fifth skull to pick up to get the free blunder guy. It's just going to be on this podium there. There you go. So now to get the free blunder guy, you want to come up to the wardens, just outside the wardens office in here. And the blunder guy will be there to pick up. So now we're going to go upgrade the Blunder Gat to the Magma Gat. This is what you definitely need for the Holy Streg. It's an unbelievable weapon. And then we could pack a punch it. So when you're ready, round five, place it in the fire. And this is going to be a lockdown process in the Warden's house. And it might be tough, but it is only round five, six and seven when you're going to be doing this. So you've got your Katana. And like I said, you need to get that up to level two. But I'll tell you more about that later in the video. But that is what you want to do. Use your katana in here. It's very easy. Because you might just have a pistol. Or a bad wonder weapon. No, not a bad wonder weapon. A bad weapon box. So when you've got a load of kills. You'll see three skulls above this fire. And then when you see the three skulls. That means you've killed enough zombies. And you want to go up to the fire and press square. And that's going to basically make the fire go blue. And when the fire goes blue. You want to as quick as you can. Pick up the blunder gap and you want to run as fast as you can. Make sure you've got definitely two grand as well just to open a door. You want to go to these blue barrels and it's going to refill the fire on the blunder gap. If you don't reach the blue barrels quick enough it's going to dissolve and you're going to have to start again. Um, but yeah there's another barrel there. Keep on running. You don't need stamina up. There's a barrel there. Keep on running. Basically we're going to go to the, uh, the spawn area. There's going to be another blue barrel to refill that essence of blue fire on your on your blunder gap there it is keep on going over the catwalk and there's going to be one at the end of the catwalk you do have a few shots on this on this blunder gap so you can shoot if you do get stuck there's the other um, blue barrel there's gonna be one more left and you want to go down here last blue barrel and you're going to place it in this machine here and this is where you can get the magma gap so wait maybe five to ten seconds for the girls to spawn the magma gap in and you want to go pick it up. If you leave it too long in that machine, it's going to disappear. And you have to go, basically, um, get the blunder gat out of the box, which is impossible. So if you do that, just start the game again. Because you need the blunder gat on round 7. And you need to get the magma gat on round 7 or 8. You know what I mean? So that's what you want to do. So we've got the magma gat now. And now, again, we're going to be, um, what's this, round 6. What am I going to be doing here? So this is where you want to go get... The numbers from this area you could just see there I went into the um, spirit mode on my shield and I can see the numbers 338 on these um, columns so you want to go down here into the number panel and you want to input that 338 into the number panel and like I said to get a spirit blast just charge some zombie souls with your um, shield and you've got one I think it's maybe four zombies equals one spirit blast so once you've inputted those numbers into the number panel, you want to come down to docks and spirit blast this machine here. And it's going to get a crane to spawn in. And you want to get your Hell's Retriever. And Hell's Retrieve the net. And it's going to drop a spoon. And you can pick up the spoon. So now you've got the spoon. Like I said earlier in this video, you want to get your katana up to level 2. And you start the game on level 1 katana. And when you use it enough, it's going to get up to level 2 and then to level 3 but you want to get it to level 2 because this is the massive part of this little step I'm going to show you so there you go I've just used it it's got number 2 there that means it's on level 2 so you've got your level 2 katana before you do the next step with the katana you want to go to the box and when you get the lock you want to get your shield out charge it up throw your health retriever and that is going to upgrade your shield so you can get 4 spirit blasts on it and like I said in this video, you want to make sure you're doing that throughout the whole of this easter egg. So now, the katana step. You're going to be getting a free monkey bomb to start the easter egg early. You see this monkey over here? 
you want to get your katana out and get kills in this location to fill up the monkey. For me, a lot of the time when I tried this on my solo easter egg runs, it takes two full katanas to do this, or maybe one and a half full katanas to do it. So as you can see, I've got my first katana out, getting a load of zombie kills, and the monkey needs to turn red, it's not turned red. So I'm going to just leave the area, and I'm going to kill some zombies, I'm going to come back next round, and I'm going to wait for my katana to be full for a second time. So here we go, it's full for a second time. I've got some zombies next to me. Kill some more zombies with the katana. It's going to be a specialist weapon, so it can be any, but the katana is best. And then when the monkey is red, shoot it, and it's going to disappear. And you've bossed it. So you can go to the spawn area of the map, and you can go pick up your monkey bombs. And the monkey bombs are going to be literally right in the spawn area. Follow these um, the route here. Go down the steps, and you're going to swap your Hell's Retriever for the monkey bombs. So, we can literally start the easter egg now. Um, usually you need to wait till round 17 to start the easter egg, but with the monkey bombs you can start it as soon as you get the monkey bombs and you've got the spoon as well. So this is where you want to go spawn in a warden. And you want to get your shield and spirit blaster number panel and you're going to put the number 666 into the number panel. Here we go. And you're going to wait for that noise of the warden spawning in. You're going to hear him like drop from like the rafters. It makes a right earthquake noise. There you go, you heard that. So now you want to come to the warden's house, warden's office, whatever you want to call it. You want to get your spoon and knife this wall here. This is definitely what you want to do. You can see the scratch marks on the wall. And then get your monkey bomb and throw it underneath the spoon marks on the wall. And the warden will basically blow up, which is unreal. So when you get in here, press square on that orb. And um, you want to press square on this body. And it's going to show you a little cutscene. The zombies will despawn. The roof of this house will disappear in a dramatic style. Once you've done that, you want to come to the spawn area and you want to place the red orb you got from that lovely new area. Place it on the map. And then you want to press square onto this book. And this is the first easter egg step spawning in. So, hopefully you've got some spirit blast on your shield. If you don't, just start the next round. Leave a zombie at the end of the round. Get some spirit blast. And you can do this step. So as you can see, a bird is spawned in. And this bird is going to be in a location around the map. You can only see it if you get your shield out and go into the blue spirit mode. And also you can hear out for the bird by hearing the bird noise it makes. I'm going to show you an example of that. So there's about 40 locations for the bird. Um, there's many guides on YouTube um, showing the bird locations. It's actually very easy as this. But I never really watched any guides on YouTube. I just literally went around the whole of the map and got my shield out. And you can hear the bird noise when you get close to it. And um, the best way to hear the bird noise is literally leave a zombie at the end of the round. Go into your shield blue spirit mode. And um, press, I think it's L2. And you can literally hear it. And you can actually see it as well. So I'm just running around the map now. I've been looking in loads of locations. You can check the guides out on YouTube. It'll be much easier. But I found the bird over here. You can see it just down here. This is uh, in the old spawn area of Mob of the Dead. There's a bird, so when you see it, spirit blast it, and that is one out of three birds found. Where are you going, little bird? No so you can only find one bird every round. I'm just showing you that one again. So you want to start the next round, build up some points, and uh, get your spirit blast um, charged up on your shield. So the next round has started, and the best hoarding spot is definitely this spot here. This is the new industry spawn area, and this is the best place to just get a, a mosh pit of hoarding zombies. And also, I found the second bird here. This was just up in the rafters. So there we go. That's the second one found. And then the final bird location, you could hear it then actually. Um, is up here for me and my game. There it is. So that's three out of three birds found. Like I said, they're going to be everywhere. They're going to be at the docks. There's going to be loads just everywhere. That's that's why it's quite easy because there's so many spawn locations. So hopefully you found the three birds um, of the last three rounds. Um, like I said, only one spawns each round. 
So once you've got the third bird, you're going to be finding a final bird. And this one's the hardest one. You want to go pick up the Hell's Retriever. So you want to swap your monkeys. And you want to go get the Hell's Retriever from that tunnel. That was calling Mount Doom. You know, Mordor and all that. So what's going to happen now is at the end of the next round, you want to leave a zombie. And you want to make sure you've got um, your Hell's Retriever, like I said. And there's going to be only a certain amount of spawn locations for the next bird. But this bird is going to be invisible even in the shield blue spirit blast mode. So what you want to do, I'm going to show you the possible spawn locations for this bird. It can only spawn in certain areas. I'm going to show you them. And you want to listen out for the bird noise and also a warden crying. So the locations for the invisible bird are going to be as followed. Um, a few can spawn up here. You can just see the locations I'm pointing above the door. There's one above this um, railing in Michigan Avenue. Go down the stairs. There's going to be a few in this room up in the rafters. There's going to be a few in the next room possibly in your game on the floor in the rafters. Go down here. There's going to be a few maybe near this wall here. And there's going to be one on the top of the washing machine in the showers. Um, so if you can't hear the warden crying or the bird noise in any of these locations... You want to follow these next um, routes and next locations for the um, for the bird to spawn in. So there's going to be one spawn location, possibly, um, above the radiator. Just before you go down the stairs, I'm going to show you it right now. So always get your shield out and go into the spirit mode so you can hear the bird. Um, go down, there's going to be one spawn location um, on these stairs. Um, so you want to listen out for that one. It's going to be up there. And go past the number panels for some more locations. It can spawn just next to these railings in this little tunnel to your left. I can't hear any bird noise. I'm going to keep on going down. And there's also one up here and there's also one on this machine here. And there's also a few on the docks. But like I said, it gets easier when you hear the bird noise. So I'm going to show you my location. So fellas, now you know the locations of the possible um, spawn location for the invisible bird. For this far final bird challenge. Um, you want to go find it and um, you want to be listening out for that bird noise. We're going to show you an example in my game. I could hear it down here, but I didn't have a clue whereabouts. But there it is, fellas. We're going to let you listen to it now. So I was looking straight at it and you can see that white flash. That means the bird is exactly there. Can you see, you see the white flash? There you go, and that noise of the warden crying and the bird is like full blast. So I'm definitely looking at it. So what we're going to do is go to the number panel, and you're going to input 872 into the number panel. And this is going to spawn a zombie blood. A zombie blood can last for 30 seconds. If you've got temporal gift on it, it'll last for much longer. But zombie blood makes you see the bird. Don't get too close to the bird. You can only look at it for maybe one second or it flies off. I see the bird. Hell's Retriever, get it out. Boom. You've bossed it, fellas. The book will spawn. You can pick it up. But, fellas, if you do fail, which I've done so many times. I'm going to show you an example of this. So, I was looking for the bird. I couldn't really find it, but I could hear the noise. I had me zombie blood on, so I was ready to boss the step. I couldn't see it. I was looking. I could hear it. But it was literally right above me, and I was too close to it, which means it's going to get scared. Here we go. It's just above me to the left. There it is, Hell's Retriever. Didn't get it in time. So if you get too close, or look at it for too long, it's going to fly away. So all you do is wait for the next round and uh, get another zombie blood and try again. So hopefully that was clear enough. Like I said, there's many guides on the um, bird locations, which I did use for a few. But you don't really need to use them once you get the hang of it. Just listen out for the bird noise. So once you've picked up the book... You want to come to this warden's house, into the new area, place it onto the lap of the lovely skeleton, and the book will be there to see. So once the talking has stopped, you can press square onto the book, and it's going to show three numbers. And this is the spawning in of the next easter egg step, and we're going to be completing five challenges, but I'm going to show you exactly what to do. Wait for the book to start going rogue, and then you want to press square or X, um, onto the book to so stop it on a certain page and then you want to get your shield out look at it It's going to show you three numbers for me in my game. It was eight seven four um, If you see a number with a line through it 
if it's uh, if it looks like a one, it's going to be a four. If it looks like a seven, it's going to be a four as well. If it's got a line through the through the through the number. So input the um, the numbers you found on the book into the number panel eight seven four for me. You're going to see it blink. That means you've bossed it, and one of the five challenges will spawn. So to find the challenge, you're going to be um, basically going around the map to try to find a red light that's coming from the lighthouse. Um, when you see a red light, this is the new Industries 1, you want to get your shield out and spirit blast it. So this challenge is probably the hardest one for me. Um, it was it was annoying. I've failed many times at this, but I know exactly what to do. Hopefully you've got the upgraded shield, because that means you can carry four spirit blasts instead of just the two. And so you want to spirit blast that red orb, and that's going to basically start the challenge. But I'm going to start the next round and I'm going to get me um, shield up to four spirit blast. You're going to need them for this challenge, and it's pretty tough, um, but I'm going to show you what to do. You want to start the next round, and you want to get your shield up to full of the four spirit blasts. You want to leave two zombies at the end of the round, and you want to come over to the old spawn area of Mob of the Dead. So, once you spirit blast the orb last round, this round, you're going to kill a zombie in the spawn area here right now. So here we go, a zombie comes, I'm going to shoot it, and a ghost will spawn in spirit mode. And all you do is spirit blast it, here we go, spirit blast it, boom. And then you're going to hold the trigger button to keep charging it. Keep on charging it until the ghost kind of buggers off your charge, and that is one out of five charges complete. Like I said, your um, shield can only carry four um, charges at a time, and you want to do this five times. So I'm on to my second go now. I've left a zombie at the end of the round to make it a little easier. Here we go, this is the second Spirit Blast. I'm going to charge him up, and basically you've got to charge him up five times before he reaches the spawn area. So I'm going to show you this throughout. So that's two out of five done. I'm going to Spirit Blast him again, but look, I've run out of Spirit Blast. So that's why the last round I charged up my Spirit Blast. Um, so I got him on full, but luckily enough I had an in-dead, no, undead man walking, not in-dead, which makes them all to shamble in walking speed for a minute. So what I did was charge up my shield. The ghost will be heading towards spawn, which is, you can just see it down there, so I know where he is. So I'm just charging up my shield, because I need to spirit blast him another two to three more times. And obviously I had no more Spirit Blast left, so I'm waiting until my Undead Man walking is on half. You can just see it. There we go, I'm going to um, charge up my last one there. And then I'm going to run past the zombies, and with half of my Undead Man walking left, I'm going to go try to charge the ghost up. And it's, uh, it's pretty mental, is this? It's very tough, I must say, but Undead Man walking helps a lot. So for a third time, I Spirit Blast the ghost, and I'm charging him up. And he's getting closer to spawn now, so here we go, fourth time, charging him up. When he gets redder, that means you're doing good. Um, so this is the fourth time now. And boom, it's actually worked. Four Spirit Blasts actually did it. Um, so yeah, so once the ghost is fully red and he's moving by himself, that means you've done it. So you want to make your way to spawn, and there's one more thing you need to do. So watch out for that ghost. And basically, you're going to be turning a trap on, and it's going to kill the ghost. So I'm going to show you exactly what to do now. So you've done the hard part now, fellas. You've charged the um, ghost up four times, um, and life is good right now. So don't die, or you're going to absolutely cry mal. Yeah. So the ghost is heading towards this location in New Industries. You want to turn on the trap before it gets to it. So I'm going to turn on the trap now. The trap will kill the ghost. And you've bossed it, fellas. You'll see a red orb drop, and you can go pick up the red orb. If you don't put it on the trap, fellas, um, the ghost will, will die, but it won't drop this red orb. But you need this red orb, and that is one out of five challenges complete. If you have any more questions about this challenge, put them in the comments. And, uh, yeah, go check out me next video on the next challenge, and I'm showing you the whole Easter egg steps in mini videos. And also, if you do fail any challenge, you just go back to the book next round, get a new set of numbers, and go to the number panel, input them into the number panel, and a new challenge will spawn. It could be the same challenge you just did, or it could be a different one. 
Right, I've got the most super easiest to understand solo guide for the powerhouse doing the Simon Says Step and the last part of this. It's going to be easy to watch, easy to understand, not rushed at all. I'm going to show you exactly what to do. So, just like any challenge, you want to go get your new set of numbers by pressing square on the book and it's going to land on a page. For me, the numbers were 833, so I went down to the number panel and inputted these into the number panel. And when you put them in right, a red light will spawn into the map. It's going to be in one of the five challenge locations, but for me, it was in the powerhouse, which is at the spawn, and this was the challenge. So I waited to the end of the round, and um, I went up to the um, powerhouse, which is in the spawn. It's near the first power location. Go into spirit mode, I can see the red orb. Spirit blast it, and the challenge is kind of like set to go, really, whenever you want. Um, what I did was carry on that next round. I made sure my um, shield was full of four spirit blasts, so I charged my shield up. That's always the best thing to do with these challenges is to um, spirit blast the red orb, then start the next round, and fill up your shield with four spirit blasts. And hopefully you've got the upgraded shield, because that can carry four shield blasts. If the normal shield you have, that's only two. So make sure you've got the upgraded shield. I'm going to leave a zombie at the end of the next round, just the one zombie. And then I'm going to come down to the docks. And it's going to be a Simon Says Challenge. And this one is very daunting at first. It was for me, but I've made a lovely diagram that you can copy and draw out on a bit of paper. So you want to go and get a bit of paper and a pen. So I'm going to show you some locations of the generators. So here we go, I'm going to show you the six locations. So, one generator that can be lit up is this generator here. They all have a lovely diagram sticked onto them. This one can light up, this is two out of six. A third generator is going to be this one here. Again, it's got a, a symbol on it with some writing, but forget about that for now. A fourth um, generator is going to be this one up here. You can see it there with the white paper on. A fifth spawn location is going to be this one right here. <clears throat> here it is. It's the one next to it. There we go. And then a final generator that can light up in the Simon Says step is... Um, I'm just going to go outside because that zombie is very consistent. And it's going to be this one right here, fellas. So I've shown you all six locations, but probably right now you're like, Oh my god, I've forgotten the locations. But this is where this lovely... Um, diagram I've made, which is right here, this lovely diagram is basically um, going to help your boss's step. And this is what you want to draw out on your bit of pen and paper, this lovely diagram right here. So as you can see, if you want to go stand in this location right here, fellas, this is the location that I've drawn it out in. So if you want to go stand in this location, I'm showing you right now, so um, you can see those two generators are behind you. So you're facing towards the power switch in the docks. And this map is showing you where you are stood. This is where I'm stood in my game. The power switch is right ahead of me. And uh, got, you've got the two generators just behind you. And you've got the other four right in front of you. So this diagram is what you want to like. It's like your template almost. So you want to draw this out on a bit of paper, fellas. And once you've drawn it out... Um, you might... I don't know if you want to get familiar with the, with the generators and like get a little map in your head of where the generators are but once you're ready to go with the Simon Says, it don't matter if you fail come back next round and you can get a new challenge and blah 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 but I'm going to show you the challenge right now so to start it, it's this sparking machine here, press square on it and it'll go dark and one light will spawn this light has spawned for me, I've ticked it off on a bit of paper so I know which one it is and I'm going to go press square on it, that is one done so now Two will spawn in. Two lights on two generators will spawn in. So this is where in solo, pausing the game helps. So when you see one light, pause the game. Put number one on your um, on your diagram. Pause the game for the second light and um, write number two on it. So as you can see, that one's number one and that one's number two. So I'm going to go press square. That's B for me in my game. And this one's D. There we go. Bossing it, so a three will spawn now. It gets a lot tougher now, um, but pausing the game and writing it one, two, three on your um, diagram helps so much. So solo pausing is a great thing to have right now. So 
This light spawn, that's one in my sequence of lit up generators. This one is number two in the sequence. So I'm going to write it on my diagram. And this one is number three. I'm going to write it on my diagram. So I'm going to go put them in order. So that one lit up first. This one lit up second. I got a bit confused there because the generators are pretty close together. They're definitely that one. And then this one lit up third. So now there's going to be a sequence of four lights. It gets harder. So what I've done is crossed out the numbers on my diagram. And I'm going to restart fresh for this four sequence. This is hardcore. Right, this one lit up. That's the first in my sequence. This one was second in my sequence. Write that on my diagram. This one is number three. And this one is number four. So it can be the same generator sometimes. Watch out for that, fellas. So right, I'm going to go input these. So this one was number one. This one was number two. I love that generator, it's great. This one was number three. Obviously, I'm pausing to see which one I'm looking at on my diagram. And this one was number four. So this is where it's the last one, and it's the hardest. So I've crossed out my numbers, um, just so I start fresh on my diagram. And I'm going to start it. So if you've paused your game in solo now, or if you're just watching for a bit of banter, once you've done this final one, you want to literally watch out for three lights beaming on. Just giving you a warning, because they only go on for like five seconds, you need to write these down. But I'm going to show you the final one of a sequence of five. So this one was number one in my game, in the sequence of five. This one was number two. So once you get used to it, it's pretty simple really. Um, this one was number three. I'll write that on my diagram. This one was number four. So that's the same generator, so that can happen. And this one is number five. So I'm going to go input these into the generator. So that one was number one in the five sequence. Pause the game, look at my diagram. Get back into the game. This one was number two. Look at my diagram again. This one was number three. This one was number four. And this final one was number five. And once you've done the fifth sequence, you want to watch out for three lights staying on, fellas. So keep your diagram ready. And you're going to circle the generators on your diagram that have the light staying on. So I'm going to show you in my game which light stayed on for me. It's going to be different in everyone's game. But watch out for three lights beaming on for five seconds constant. They're going to be on at the same time. So here we go. That one, that one, and that one have stayed on together. So it's those three you want to circle on your map. There you go. So I've ticked them or circled them. Look at that. So the lights will stay on for maybe five seconds. Tick them on your map. Those ticked off generators that lit up are going to have a paper on them. And there's going to be a symbol. So you want to draw these out or take a picture. So this first generator was lit up for me out of the three. So I'm just going to write this down. I'm going to save it in the bottom corner of my screen. So I've looked at that generator. I'm going to go to another generator that stayed on throughout that five second constant of light beams on the generator. And it's this one here. Again, it's got a symbol on, so you want to take a picture or draw it out. You know, it's, it's artistic this. You could do it in art in college. It's great. Um, so yeah, you want to save that one. Remember that one. Draw it out. And then the last um, generator that lit up in my constant of three after the Simon Says step was this one. So I'm going to take a picture or draw this out on a bit of paper. So you've got the three symbols. So you've done it down here. Just go pick up the punch card. This is very important. Go pick up the punch card from in this generator area. The punch card is just on this little table here with some lovely Yankee candles on I got for Monk's Cross. Um, so, go to spawn area and you're going to input the punch card into this machine. There's going to be five lit up computer panels. You're going to go find your symbols on them. It's that simple. So I'm going to show you one example. So this one was this one, the same symbol. So I'm going to press square on it, and it's going to give me a new symbol. So what I'm going to do is draw that new symbol out or take a picture. Simple as that. So it's a lot, a lot of drawing involved in this step. So this is the new symbol. I'm going to draw it out, and I'm going to save it next to me on a bit of paper.
I'm going to go to another computer panel now. And this one is um, this symbol that I got from the generators. I'm going to show you it right now. All the computers are in this area, so it's very easy to find. It's going to be this one. There it is. So that's exactly like one of my symbols. So I'm going to press square on it, fellas. There we go. So it's changed to a new symbol. And I'm going to write that down or take a picture or draw it out on a bit of paper. So now come to a final computer panel. And there's going to be your last symbol from your generators. For me, it was this one in my game. Look at it, it's exactly like it. So I'm going to press square on it to get a new symbol. Here we go. So that's the new symbol I got. So I'm going to draw it out, take a picture, or write it on a bit of paper, whatever you want to do. So now you've hopefully got three shield blasts left on your shield. If you don't, I don't know if you can maybe start the next round and the challenge won't fail you. But that's why I said at the start of this whole challenge is to shoot that orb and then charge your shield up to four and then start the Simon Says Step. So you, once you've got your free shield blast, you want to come to this area and there's going to be this ghost in spirit mode. And as you can see, there's going to be different levers on different generators and, with, and there's going to be those symbols on. Some symbols won't be your symbols you've got out on your bit of paper. Some will be, as you can see, this one is. So when the ghost is in front of the generator with your symbol on, you want to spirit blast that ghost and he's going to turn that lever down. So I've just done that in my game here. That is one out of three done. So you're going to watch the ghost again. He's going to go back into spirit mode. Get your shield out. And you want to look at him. He's going to move from generator to generator. And on different generator, there's going to be a different symbol. And one of those symbols is going to be yours. It's as simple as that, fellas. So for me in my game, it's this one. You can see that lovely symbol he's got going on there. So... You're going to spirit blast the ghost when it's in front of that generator with your symbol on. So I'm going to do it right now. Spirit blast ghost, boom. I did kill the zombie at the last round, but we've got to go find one more symbol for the ghost to shock, which is fun. So here we go. It doesn't matter how long you take as well, because he does go from generator to generator. The zombies is spawned, so for either throw a monkey or put me in plain sight, which was very lucky, actually. But, here we go, he's going to go to the generator with my last symbol on, that circle with an arrow in it. Here we go, the zombies did come, but I spirit blasted the ghost, and he turned the lever for a third time. And if you've done it correctly, the ghost will drop a red orb to pick up. So pick up the red orb, and you've done that set, fellas. If you do fail on either the Simon Says bit of the generators... You're going to have to get to the next round, get a new set of numbers, go input into the number panel, and a new challenge will spawn. It may be this one, it could be another one that you've not completed. Right, I've got a super clear, easy to understand, not rush guide to do the solo easter egg challenge in the showers. And this one is one of the easier ones of the five challenges. So, you want to go to the, um, the house with the warden in, and you're going to get a new set of numbers. Press square on the book. Here we go. This one was um, 787, but it's not a 7. If you see a line through one of the numbers, it's going to be a 4. Bear that in mind, fellas. There we go. Look at that. I've made it for you. <laughs> so I, I was putting in 787. It wasn't working, but it's actually a 4. I don't know how I came up with that, but it worked. So once you've got your numbers, come down to the number panel area. And you're going to input these into the number panel, and a challenge will spawn. So... Go around the map and find a red beaming light. And this one for me was in the showers. Go check out my other guides for the other challenges if you want. Spirit Blast that red light. The orb will appear in normal life mode. There you go, I'm loving it right now. And the guy will spawn with a banjo. You can't leave this area, so before you do this, make sure you're set. you got a full katana as well. And just wait for the talking. Pick up the banjo from the guy. So go press square on him and then go pick up the banjo. And you want to go stand in the blue circle on the floor and get zombie kills. I'll put insta kill on to make it a little easier. You've got a limited amount of time to do this. So if you don't kill any zombies um, quick enough, you're going to fail it. But I've got the upgraded magma gat. Which you should have from following all my easter egg mini video steps before this. And here we go. I'm just shooting the magma gat. If I do get stuck... Um, I get out my other weapons. The blue circle will disappear. It'll go around here. 
So you kill some more zombies. I've got my katana on full now. So I'm going to get that out to complete the last part of this challenge. Dying Wish saved my life there as well. So it is quite tough actually. Monkey bombs do help if you can throw them. But they take quite long to throw. But my katana is getting kills in the blue circle. And you'll know you've completed it. Is you'll hear a banjo noise. And you've bossed it. So you can either go back to the ghost now. And um, go give the banjo back to him. It should be blue. And there you go fellas. You've pretty much bossed it. So wait for the ghost to get the banjo in his hand. It's kind of it's kind of glitching out there. But there he goes. He's got the blue banjo. You've charged it up with zombie souls. And when the ghost just appears. You can pick up the red orb. And you've bossed it. And if you do fail that step. Next round. Go back to the book. In the warden's house. Get a new set of numbers. Put them into the um, panel. And... A new challenge will spawn. It could be that one or it could be any of the others. Go check out my guides on them. They're like not rushed and good, hopefully. So go check them out. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right, fellas, I've got a super clear, easy to understand, not rushed solo Easter egg guide for the Michigan Avenue challenge in the Blood of the Dead Easter egg. Um, but for this, you want to go get your, your numbers from the book. For me and my game, um, just press square. There you go to get the book from going rogue. The numbers are 331, so I'm going to go input these into the number panel down on the spiral stairs. And when you've inputted these into the number panel, a challenge will spawn, a red beam from the lighthouse will spawn in one of the five challenge locations. And if it spawns in this location for you, this is the Michigan Avenue challenge. So get your shield out, and you're going to shield blast, spirit blast, the red orb. You can see it here. There you go. And when you do that, the uh, red orb will stay appearing in real life mode for your character, which is beautiful. So once you've shot the red orb, you want to come to the cafeteria. And you're going to kill a dog or a zombie. And a ghost will spawn. All you do is spirit blast the ghost. And an escort mission will spawn. So you can only go in certain areas of the map. And you're going to be escorting this ghost to the red orb in Michigan Avenue. And before I show you... The whole of my game escorting him. Uh, make sure you've got the upgraded um, magma gat. Um, monkey bombs help. A full katana. You can always use the... Um, there's like a power up in a cage in a prison cell. Just outside of the cafeteria. You can always open that and get the insta kill. And also a gobble gum like in plain sight. Or an insta kill gobble gum will help. But basically don't damage the ghost or he's going to die. So basically escort him. Protect him. Try not... Shoot him with your gun or katana him. So here we go. You've just spirit blast the ghost. By killing a zombie. He appears. Spirit blast him. And an escort mission will start. So I've thrown a monkey bomb straight away. As you can see the lockdown has, has started. You can only go in certain areas. That dog nearly. Bugged it up for me. Basically. So I'm going to throw another monkey bomb. They're going to come through all the windows, so shoot in front of the ghost, shoot behind the ghost. All the windows, there's going to be so many zombies spawning in. So here we go, oh my god, there's so many zombies right now. But the, but the upgraded magma guy is, is perfect. They're throwing another monkey bomb just to, just, just to be safe. <laughs> the ghost is making his way to Michigan Avenue. This is probably the hardest part now, is because you've thrown all your monkey bombs. Or if you want to save him, you can. But I've got my katana out now. I tried not to kill or damage the ghost. <laughs> a warden will spawn as well, so it's pretty tough. If you get a monkey bomb, you can throw that and it'll distract the warden and the zombies for a little while. But the ghost will go down the stairs. I've just katana the warden, which actually did quite a little da damage to him. It took his arm off anyway. Get the magma get out. It's going to be pretty rogue down here. The shield is going to help a lot as well. If you've got a monkey bomb, throw it. But hopefully you've bossed it and the ghost will go into the red orb. And when it goes inside there, it's going to drop the um, the red severical orb. Looks like the little thing off Finding Nemo, doesn't it? The little egg. <laughs> Pick it up and you've bossed it. If you do fail, come back next round and you want to get a new set of numbers from the book. Input them into the panel and the new challenge will spawn. It could be that one or it could be another challenge that you've not completed yet. But that's what you do if you fail. So hopefully you've bossed it, fellas. If you need any um, you know, answers, comment some questions in the in the comment section and I'll try and answer them. I've done this step many times. Right, fellas, I've got the most easiest Morse code solo Easter egg challenge guide you'll ever see. It's not rushed, um, easy to understand, um, the best tactic, and yeah, it's not rushed, which is the main thing, because you got 
YouTube is going. Blah, blah, blah. So, go get your set of numbers. Press square on this guy. And you're going to look in your shield. 149 was the numbers in my game. They're going to be different in your, in your game. Um, once you've got your three numbers, come down to the number panel. And you're going to input those into the number panel in the spirally stairs. And you can now go look for one of the five challenges that are going to spawn into the map. Go check out my other guide through the challenges. I've got other really good solo guides with that. So, you want to make sure you've got four spirit blasts on your shield. So you can always start the next round, get some charge of the shield from zombies, get four spirit blasts, leave a zombie, and come do this challenge. So, if your red light from the lighthouse is beaming towards the docks, that is the Morse code challenge. So when you come to docks, you want to spirit blast the red light. You can see it in spirit mode. Once you spirit blast it, it's going to appear in real life character mode. And now you can go start the Morse code step. So the Morse code step is trial and error. Get a new shield, leave a zombie at the end of the round, and I'm going to show you exactly what to do. So dots and dashes is Morse code. And um, a dot is a one second um, beep. And a dash is a maybe three second beep. That was cringy, you know. But that's exactly what Morse code is. And uh, trial and error is basically trying something. And if it didn't work, try something differently. So if I put into the Morse code machine dot dash dot and the warden laughs, that means the last um, Morse code that I put in was wrong. So that dot. So I just went dot dash dot the warden laughed. So that dot was wrong. So the next time I go to the Morse code machine, I'm going to go dot dash dash and the warden won't laugh at me. So basically the warden laugh means you've done it wrong. If you leave the room, the warden laughs. So try not to get that mixed up with the wrong inputting of the Morse code. So I'm going to show you an example. I'm going to show you the whole thing of my game. So I've led the zombie away. Um, that's always best tactic on solo. Lead him as far away as you can and then come down. That shield will help you a lot in this room because you're going to get bad in the back. Come into the room. This is where the Morse code is. And I'm going to try it. I've put in a dot. I've put in a dash. The warden didn't laugh in the room. He laughed when I left the room. So that dot and dash was correct. It might sound random at first, fellas. But I'm going to show you that again. Here we go. So, I went into the room... And I thought I'd try this trial and error. I thought I'd go dot dash. So to input a dot, I went dot. I press square for one second. To input in a dash, I held it down for three seconds. So here we go. I'm going to try it. Dot. Dash. So the water didn't laugh. So on my bit of paper, I'm going to put a circle and then put a line. Because dot and dash is correct in my game. So I'm going to lead the zombie away again. And I'm going to come back, and I'm going to figure out what comes after that dash. So, I just tried a dot after the dash. I went dot, dash, and dot. And the warden laughed. So, it can't be dot next. So, the next time I go to it, it must be a dash. Look at that. It's a dash. The warden didn't laugh at me. So it's, it's just it's just trial and error, fellas. So I went dot, dash, dash. The warden didn't laugh. So I'm going to go back again. I'm going to see what comes after that second dash. So I tried a dot, and the warden laughed. It's another dash. It's as simple as that, fellas, once you get the hang of it. So I went dot, dash, dash, dot, and it was wrong. So I'm going to try a dash. After the second one. Here we go. Oh, the dash worked. Look at that. No more than laugh. I'm going to go in there again and see what's after that third dash. Yeah. So the dash worked, but that dot didn't. So again, trial and error. I've wrote it all out with a bit of paper. So it must be dash next. So I've wrote that out. Here we go. Dot. Dash. Oh, 
<laughs> well, after those big row of dashes, I put in two dots and the warden didn't laugh. But then I put in a dash after those two dots and he laughed. So I've wrote them out with a bit of paper. And I'm just trying it again, see what comes after those two dots, which must be another dot. Hey, that did something. There we go. So once your player says that did something, you've bossed it. So I'm, I'm going to show you that again, fellas. Um, so I've been writing it all out with, on my paper with a pen. And um, one, once you know it, or once you're pretty much there, you can figure it out, basically. It's, it's that simple. Hey, that did something. There we go, fellas. So if you have any questions, comment about it. Um, but it's basically trial and error. If you need a new shield, just go travel back to spawn. Hopefully the zombie doesn't despawn and kill himself and start the next round. Go get a new shield. Come back. And the zombie can like block you in the room. But if you get your katana out, it knocks him over but doesn't kill him. So that's a good tactic. And also, if you have temporal gift, you can go get a zombie blood from the um, input panel of the number panels on the stairway. Um, input 872 gives you a zombie blood and temporal gift makes those last longer so you can go into that room and not get smacked um, but yeah that is basically it the Morse code so once you've done that like I said earlier in this video make sure you've got a few spirit blasts left in your shield because you're going to be coming and escorting a ghost but you don't have to do it straight away what I did was start the next round after I completed the Morse code and I hoarded in this area, which is the best hoarding spot at the spawn. I just went through down the stairs and down in the tunnel and back up past spawn. Did a big circle. And I charged up my shield to four. It's always good to keep on charging up your shield. Once you've done, leave a few zombies end of the round, or you can do it mid-round. You want to come to this room in the infirmary, there's going to be a skeleton on the table. You want to kill a zombie in this room, and a ghost will spawn in spirit mode. So here we go, I'm going to kill a zombie. A ghost will spawn, you can just see it around there. And when the ghost spawns, you want to spirit blast it with your shield. Once you've spirit blasted it, you need to press square on him. Press square or X on the ghost, whichever is your activation button on your PS4 or Xbox. For me in my game it was PS4, so I press square on the ghost. And that starts the escort mission. So to escort the ghost, you need to kill zombies near the ghost. So while you're killing zombies, make your way to the docks. So there we go, I press square on the ghost right now. The start of the round will spawn. I'm going to put on my in means to kill just to, it's very tight in here, so I've put on means to kill just to make it a little easier in here. Here we go, I'm going to show you every step of this bit, because this is tough. Because after all that Morse code, you don't want to die. Right, here we go, zombies are spawning in. The ghost is following me wherever I shoot zombies, so I'm going to make my way to docks. And if you're luckily enough, and you've not used the gondola, or the gondola is in the location of up here, you can get on the gondola with the ghost and do a shortcut, which is great. So I've got my katana out here because it's very tight down here. The ghost is following me. Don't get too far away from the ghost or it won't follow you, basically. Um, but yeah, I'm making my way to the gondola. The ghost is slowly coming my way. The upgraded magma guy is perfect. Um, it is quite tight again. Use a monkey if you've got one, or a gobble gum. Um, maybe shield blast them if you can. But the magma guy is perfect upgraded. The ghost is coming to me. And when you're ready, when he's inside, activate the gondola, which is when I did this first time. I didn't. I haven't, I haven't seen people actually do that because I've not watched this step on YouTube. Um, but I was buzzing when I got this kid in gondola. It was, it was great. I felt like an absolute legend, um, which I'm not. So when you get down to the um, bottom of the gondola, you want to basically get the ghost into the red orb at the docks. So again, I'm just firing me magma gat everywhere. The ghost will follow you, so basically go stand in the red orb, and the ghost will go into the red portal orb, and he's going to drop another Fanning Nemo <laughs> egg, as it looks like. Pick it up, and that is that challenge complete. If you do fail, go back to the book next round. Um, get a new set of numbers, input into the panel, 
and a new challenge will spawn. It could be that Morse code one at the docks. It might be a different one that you've not done. But if you've got any questions, comment. Go check out my other easy solo, not rush guides for the challenges and the whole Easter egg step. I've got some mini guides out for it.